Welcome back, family. One of the things that I hear a lot of in our industry is about your one-on-one -on -one meetings with your direct manager, even your project team, as well as your stakeholders. And one of the key things is that you need to ensure that these meetings are meaningful, that you come prepared with, a, with topics to discuss, because you want to ensure that one of the most, most important assets that we all possess is time and time is something we can never get back. So I want to go over some tips that will address these key areas, track your progress, as well as foster a productive working relationship, not just with your manager, as well as your project team and stakeholders. This information that I've learned was through a gentleman named Dan. And when he showed me a blueprint of how he conducts his one-on-one -on -one meetings with his direct manager, uh, I translated that also with my direct manager, as well as the project team and stakeholders. So I hope this works for you. This is the blueprint family. Let's get into point. There's not even going to be any points. I'm going to start off and go over. We're going to make it first about you. These first, these first points or so, and then we're going to transition into the project team as well as stakeholders. So let's go into about you really the importance of preparation. See when you, there's four components here that I looked at. First is show professionalism. Second, de demonstrate ownership, increase efficiency, and then showcase problem solving. So when you come to the meetings prepared uh, with the, you're showing respect for your manager's time, as well as your commitment, not your interest, but your commitment to the role that you're in, uh, that you're being, that you're part of, excuse me. And you want to ensure these meetings are productive and laser focused with clear outcomes. I didn't put results, outcomes. We both, I want my manager to walk away with the outcomes that we discussed. I want to walk away with outcomes that we discussed as well. Next point is going ahead and demonstrating ownership, having the ability to demonstrate how you are taking full accountability and ownership for the role and you're being proactive instead of reactive shows a key aspect of being a leader. You're saying, I am a leader of this team. And I'm going to lead us to get to, as we'll say, the promised land or more or less of basically ensuring that this project gets finished on time, within budget, within scope, as and within uh, quality. Basically, we're talking about the triple constraints and then being able to increase efficiency, having a well-prepared agenda. I've watched people go into their one-on-ones meeting. They won't have any paper, their laptop or anything. They just go in there just to talk. And I'm going to tell you time and time again, you're going to have thoughts going all over across. You're going to be thinking all different things across your mind. So the ability to come with a well-prepared agenda, even if you have to go outside of the scope of that agenda, at least you have some structure points that you want to get across. And then most important, one of the biggest assets that you can have, even if you decide not to get in this thing that I love, that I hope you fall in love with called project management, but being able to showcase problem solving, the more you're able to be prepared where you had a problem and this was the proposed solution that you leverage, it is showing your manager that, hey, this person is that we can hand this person over a problem and they can, they'll work on finding a solution, even if it's not right, but at least lets them know their thinking and which can say to them, you know what, we need to make sure that we're keeping an eye on this individual because we want to ensure that when the next promotional opportunity is available, that we can put them in that uh, position. Always have something to discuss. Like I talked about, quick story, this is where I ended up connecting with a gentleman I talked about named Dan because he would be so prepared and I just had to figure out how do you, how are you so prepared going in, in, into your one-on-ones? And he sat down and he broke it down for me and he showed me the templates that he was using, which I'm going to talk about here at a very high level, but more or less of saying, he was saying, listen, if you don't go into this time is for you and you need to be able, your manager is not going to be at all of your meetings and all they're going to do is hear feedback from stakeholders or project team members, or if they have to have a discussion with you because they need to go up and report to the board or even to executives about a collection of projects. So you want to make sure your manager is over-prepared, he says. So it's, this is about you and your need as well as the organization. So 
I say all that to say, I know I, I tried to make the story as quick as possible, but the importance of the story is ensuring you have always have something to say. One, be active in the engagement. Bring these topics so you can be actively engaged in your work and aware of the dynamics of how your project is affecting the organization and then how you're moving forward. Two, addressing issues proactively. As you understand, the more you're proactive, the less you have to be reactive. You're not going to be able to pro be proactive to everything. There's going to be things that come along the way that you weren't expecting. This is why a project is a unique endeavor, meaning that this is something that has not been done. So there's going to be risks that you may not be aware of that flip to issues. And we talked about the difference between a risk and an issue. A risk is more, at a, and we're going to say it from a high level, is something that you assume that may or may not happen. And the issue is like, this is happening and we need, we should have already, we, we need to address this up front. And then number three, you're building trust between you and your manager. It shows that you're not passively just waiting by for someone to feed you orders because again, you don't want your manager to be thinking for you because then they're going to be like, oh, this person is easily replaceable versus you're thinking ahead of time. You're being proactive. You are pushing the envelope. You want to improve not only the project, but your overall individual uh, performance. And the last and final thing, the continue focus on continuous progress, regularly discussing challenges, successes, and ideals for improvement keeps the focus on one main thing. You're not going in there, as they say, uh, bibble babbling along about this is going on and this is going on, but you're not talking about how do we solve it? How do we focus on containing this? What do we need to do in order to move us forward? All right, let's talk about one of the main things that I hear a lot, I'll, e either if you're a project manager or not a project manager, is what's the frequency and what's the benefit of these one-on-ones? Listen, I recommend that you should have a one-on-one -on -one with your manager weekly or bi-weekly. Now, this is, there's a special case here that I will say, if you are someone that is connected with your manager, meaning you guys are meeting every other day, you may not need to have this type of frequency. But this frequency allows for regular check-in and timely feedback. And it, it also opens up the opportunity to address issues before they escalate. One of the biggest lessons that I learned a long time ago, long, long time ago, and I said, I will never let this happen to me again, is blindsiding your manager. What do I mean by blindsiding your manager? Meaning there was an issue that happened and you didn't take proactive measures to get in front of your manager to talk about, hey, this is coming. I want you to be aware of this is what we're uh, doing to rectify. But if this doesn't happen, do you have a recommended solution besides the solution we provided? And so this allows to set, this allows the opportunity to set your manager up for success. Now let's talk about the benefits of regular uh, meetings. Again, timely feedback and a quick course correction. You're still maintaining and being aligned with the or organizational overall goals. And it fosters a stronger relationship with your manager. They know you're someone that they can count on. They know that you're somebody that if something comes up, they're not concerned about you at, as much because they already met with you. They already know what you're capable of. And you just didn't prove that through just talking about it. You actually took action and you provided an update. And this also provides you with ongoing opportunities for growth and development. In, your, in this career, you want to be continually growing. You do not want to stay stagnant. Here's some outcomes from this piece. It's consistent communication leads to better support, clearer expectation, and more of a collaborative working environment. It keeps you engaged as, as well as allowing you to continue to improve in your particular role. Now, reviewing goals and self-assessment. One of the things that I reason why I know this is so powerful, and again, another shout out to Dan, is because what you can do is take your set of goals that are assigned to you. So normally you have, at the end of the year, you have a performance appraisal. So being able to take the goals that were set up by your manager and your performance appraisal, at that meeting, you should be discussing with your manager, hey, these are the goals I know that you set at the top of the year. So I want to make sure that I'm aligning and where do I need to adjust 
and bring your list of current goals. What are the things you that you want, where you want to stand out and achieve? And then also talk about the barriers that you're up against and what your proposed solution is to addressing those barriers. And again, ask for input of how do I, what would you recommend? These are my solutions. Do you think there's a better or do you know if there's a better solution in place? And so this allows you and your manager to really be in alignment together on the organizational and his, com and his goals, as well as your individual goals. Self-assessment. You want to be able to reflect on your performance re uh, that's related to the standards set by, the, by your manager and organization. Categorize your performance in key areas such as below average, meeting, or exceeding expectation, and provide evidence to support your as assessment as far as you need to be honest. If you're not meeting what was the company set goal or your manager set goal, how are we going to course correct that? And then once you figure out the how, then you need to be providing an action plan for improvement. I know this is a lot, family. I know it puts you under the pressure, but it also puts the manager under the pressure because if you're doing this appropriately, if you're doing this accurately, by the time you get to the end of the year, you, all you have to do is pull these documents from these weekly or biweekly or monthly meetings that you're having. And this is an easy update for you to update your performance appraisal. So now there's no, there's no gray area or no in between because you've already had weekly or biweekly or monthly meetings with your manager that this, sh we should be aligned of which, what type of score I should be getting at the end of the year. So I hope that helps you from that standpoint. And then, and the, one of the other things is career development and then we'll transition into project status. So career development, connect your current performance to your long-term uh, goals, discussing how your manager can support your growth and then identify skills or experience you need to develop further and propose these opportunities. Don't, again, don't have your manager think to you. If you're looking at getting the PMP or the CAPM or the ACP, or you want to get training in Microsoft Project, whatever it is, propose some so solutions. If the organization is willing, not, is not willing to pay for it, no problem. You want to pay out of pocket for it if, if you can and pay out of pocket for it and say, hey, I would like to know if since the organization is not willing to pay for it, would they be okay with me taking a, an hour or two hours to actually to work and study and provide your study plan to them so they know it's real and authentic. All right, let's talk about the uh, project status overview. You want to be able to provide a clear, concise update on where the project stands, covering key milestones, deliverables, and deviations from the plan. Now we're taking a transition away from you, and now we're talking about more about the project the organization as a whole, but you want to start with yourself first. I know that may sound selfish, but you need to be selfish in this moment because if you're not selfish, by the time you get to the end of the year, you're going to be so frustrated and say, I was doing everything right by the project and leading the project effectively. And we met all the key milestones and things of that nature, but it was like the your manager really wasn't aware of this. You waited too late. Okay. So quick, let's unpack project status. And again, the biggest thing here is you want to address timelines, deliverables, and if any deviation has happened, because again, you want to set your project manager up for success, this should be a one pager. This should not be longer than a one pager of discussing the progress achievements and what are your current or potential roadblocks and how you're ad addressing this. Again, this creates alignment and it ensures expectation is, is achieved across of the board. So milestones, key KPIs, and budget management. Milestone achievements, you're basically highlighting recently completed milestones and what is coming up next. Talk about the preview of upcoming deadline. KPIs, K, uh, key performing um, index or indicators, excuse me. You want to align performance metrics as well as key performance indicators relevant to the actual project. Timeline, you want to provide with detailed description of what's needed to meet each deadline. I'll also, I'll leave a caveat. What I always recommend is talk about the key items that are coming up within the timeline that are tasks that are coming up. This is different from milestones, but you want to be able 
talk about what's coming up. So by the time we meet next week, these are the things should have been accomplished and these are the, the next set of particular tasks. Budget management. You do not want to catch your manager off guard because of your, the budget. Maybe you have planned, let's make this up, let's make this very simple. You plan, your uh, budget was planned for a million dollars and it's based off quarter by quarter. And your actual at this time is 350 and you're like, oh, I'm a hundred thousand dollars over the, the first quarter. So I'm going to have to cut back some things of this nature. So this way it gives your manager a heads up just in case if you're going to uh, go over and then same thing of financial health by presenting a financial report and discuss any variance, just like I talked about the variance of if we're bake, breaking a million dollars down quarter by quarter and your first quarter is $250,000 and you're already at 350,000, if you're a hundred thousand dollars over, you want to pinpoint that right away. Conflict resolution and stakeholder engagement. I really truly believe project managers do not do this enough. And I recommend that you do it because the better you're at, you get at doing this, of talking about meaning, identifying the conflicts that are happening with the team, whether internal or external stakeholders and providing a proposed plan to resolve it constructively. I know we want to sit and fuss and complain. I've been guilty of it many times of I'm just so irritated with the project team or this more or less this individual or individuals that have not delivered or we're having conflicts or not showing up to the meetings. And then all of a sudden, when we get into a bigger meeting, they want to try to throw us under the bus. Okay, maybe I'm going on a rant, but you get my point. You want to gather this feedback from stakeholders and project team discuss any concerns or requests they raise and prepare a key list of your key stakeholders and project team comments. When you get this information, be able to have what the proposed solutions. And again, that you can present to your manager. And I guess that trans trans transition us into number three, proposed solution. You're always proposing solutions. After we identified the problem, we are proposing solutions and approaching conflict as opportunities not as frustrations, not as, oh, I'm so tired. You're going to go through that emotion. But after you get through that emotion, let's start uh, focusing on opportunities to strengthen these relationships and improve processes. And then the last and final thing is you want to implement a follow-up. Regular, regularly gauge stakeholders and project team satisfaction to ensure their needs and continuously being met. And then use this feedback to make ongoing improvements, not just in your present, but also in your future projects. What do you mean by that? Meaning you should be able to take that information that, because basically now you're going to probably dump that in your lessons learned, or you may even have a separate document. So when you get into another project and you're doing a project kickoff, you may be able to stack some of that information into your project kickoff where you're addressing it up up front. I'll give you an example. I may even do an episode on this where let's say one of the things is that your, some of your project team was not showing up to the meetings and you want to be able to talk about what was the proposed solution for that. And, and now you're now when you're in a part of your deck that you're presenting, you want to say, Hey, during our project team meetings, it's very important that you show up. What I've learned on previous projects is when Project team members do not show up to these meetings. They've pushed themselves further and further behind, which impacts the whole project. So if there's anything that I could do as the project manager to ensure that you know when the meetings are, what, uh, how you need them to be communicated, to make sure that you're there, I will, I am being, I'm more than willing to actually do that. Family, this is part one of the whole one-on-one meeting. I hope you enjoyed this today's episode because it's important to understand why different individuals, when they get in their one-on-one -on -one meetings, they're not prepared, why it's important to document this information. So when it comes time for your end of year performance appraisal, you're literally just taking these, taking this document that you've had weekly, bi-weekly or monthly with your manager and just putting it all together in one big document and then just going one by one on the goals that was set by him as well as the organization and just pulling from that information. It makes your one-on-ones so much easier and better.
I go by the name of ED for all you smart and intelligent folks out there. That just simply means Ed. Today is the third episode of today. So I hope you enjoyed all this value. I hope it was valuable for you because it was valuable for me just to give this information. And I thank you. I truly do thank you for the opportunity to deliver. Until next time, I'm out.